so glad to see you, glad to hear you. How are you doing? Thank you, glad to see you too. I'm doing very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, how was your day? It was, uh, it was a nice day. We finally have beautiful weather today. That was not mm -hmm. the case for the last days. We had a lot of rain and cold weather. So uh -huh. I can say that's a cool day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so summer is in the doorway. So I really hope that we'll all have much more sunny and beautiful days. Finally. Uh, so I'm very glad to finally chat with you about uh, the new album. And um, my first question will be about the intriguing title. So its name mm -hmm. is 1977. So what's behind this date? Can you please tell us? Well, first of all, uh, after many albums with uh, long uh, symbolic titles with a lot of words and everything, uh, we wanted something different this time. And uh, we thought maybe with the numbers, it was a good idea. And um, uh, in the same time, we wanted something that was a reference to the 18, 19, 17 uh, uh, vibes we infused uh, in the songs. Mm -hmm. So we chose um, 1977 uh, as well because uh, it's a special year for Morton and me because uh, it's the year we were born, both of us. So uh, this beautiful year looks to be uh, the perfect uh, title for this album. Mm -hmm. The reason. Yeah, so it's uh, it's still pretty symbolic. <laughs> I would <laughs> it say. Is. Yes, uh, it doesn't differ a lot. I mean, in terms of symbolism from the previous titles, in such case, yeah. Uh, okay. In general, how would you describe the growth and development of uh, the band throughout these years? Because the band has been existing for a while, I would say. Yeah, yeah, twenty years now. So mm -hmm. it's been a quite. <laughs> Um, I would say that uh, from the first uh, album to the last one, uh, Sirenia's music has never stopped evolving, uh, exploring uh, new directions musically all the time. Um, there is a great uh, diversity uh, in uh, its approach uh, in this album. I, I mean, uh, from uh, uh, golf metal uh, uh, songs or even pop metal songs, uh, some songs that are more uh, heavy. Um, uh, I have to say that it's a band that never stayed uh, stuck in a fixed aesthetic musically and uh, has always explored and opened uh, the possibilities, uh, serving serving the same secure uh, recipe, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, in music is, is of course uh, a security. Uh, but I believe um, it's the best way as well to falter in a moment or, or another. So uh, trying new recites all the time uh, opens up more possibilities. That's what I, I believe. Um, so, yeah, trying this kind of new recites uh, uh, open this possibility. And uh, sometimes it can be um, a bit risky. And mm -hmm. it can disturb a little bit the fans, what happened sometimes. But uh, on the other hand, um, I, I believe it's a courageous, maybe, and respectful way of uh, working. Uh, personally, I, I like to be surprised by, uh, by a band when I listen to a new album. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, um, I, I like when I never know what to expect, you know, on the, on, on the next album. And uh, that's what we try to do with Serenia. We're always trying to to surprise the fans with the new explorations, and uh, well, that's uh, in my opinion precisely what makes uh, Morton's music interesting, and I'm pretty sure that's probably why Serenia exists for such a long time because that's a band that love to evolve and taking risks. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's exactly what I also wanted to talk with you about. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it seems like you have already answered this question. So I wanted to talk about what's better from the creative standpoint to stick to something that works 100% and maybe like bounce around it mostly or experiment. But as far as uh. I understood, <laughs> you are <laughs> for experiments for sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely to experiment. 
I think maybe music uh, uh, music has always evolved because of experimentations. So risk mm -hmm. is interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, so then again, if we continue the uh, topic of experiments and uh, a bit of like changes, what I noticed is that uh, in the recent uh, Serenios albums and uh, in the upcoming one for sure, so uh, you decided to minimize the amount of uh, choral parts. So what's the reason for that? So is there generally a reason for that? Because they were so beautiful <laughs> i mean the choirs yeah um that's a, a very hard question <laughs> because uh, i was <laughs> just curious sorry <laughs> <laughs> yes but you're you're absolutely right absolutely really right um the thing is when we recorded uh riddles ruins and uh, revelations uh it was during the pandemic Mm -hmm. And technically, it was absolutely impossible to record the choir oh. <laughs> as we did uh, for the previous albums. Uh, we were used to uh, record the, the a French choir in Marseille, in, uh, mm -hmm. in the studio we were uh, used to, to recording. And unfortunately, uh, during the, the pandemic, it was technically absolutely impossible. Uh -huh. So we had to find uh, um, solutions. So we decided to try something different this time. Uh, with no choir, so it was uh, a bit disturbing for me, uh, first because uh, I was part of the choir uh, from the beginning, that's how I met uh, Morten and uh, worked with Serenia, mm -hmm. and I believe that the sound of the choir is really part of the Serenia sound, but, uh, but well, as I said previously, I think it's always interesting to try something else. Mm -hmm. The choir has always been part of the of the all almost all the albums, and uh, well, we wanted to try something different for this album too. It worked on the previous one, and uh, we wanted to continue this way, exploring something else. That doesn't mean that the choir won't be back. Uh -huh. uh, never. I hope it will, and I'm sure it. It will but uh, for now we wanted just to experiment something different oh yeah of course i mean i didn't even think about that there was like a technical reason from the start but it really yeah. works yes you're absolutely right uh-huh okay uh so if we continue on the topic of the new album what song is your favorite uh what song is special for you what song <laughs> would you distinguish uh to talk a little bit about it uh... It's, I really love this album very much because uh, of its uh, variety and it's very, very hard for me to pick up one song uh, among uh, the songs because uh, they are all so totally different, different atmospheres, different arrangements and emotions. So there is some days I prefer one or another and it's always changing. So if I have to choose today, I would say... Uh, I love uh, the dark and melancholic atmosphere of uh, Oceans Away. I was happy to record a ballad again because we didn't do uh, a ballad on the previous album. So I was happy to, to make one. I love ballads. And um, so I really love the melancholic atmosphere of this song, the crying, uh, crying guitar solo. Uh, on it that is really 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 nice from uh, Nils Kovaron or or um, guitar player and the um, uh, symphonic arrangements just give me goosebumps every time I I listen to this song I I'm really impressed with the work uh, Morten did on it mm -hmm. and uh, maybe something totally different uh, I like the this uh, poppy song called uh, uh, Thousand Scars because of its uh, reference to, to the 70, 80 uh, vibes. Mm -hmm. I think the, the chorus is very uh, catchy and, uh, and a bit uh, ABBA style, and I really love it. I think it's a very energetic uh, song, but I love all the album. It's very, very hard for me to, to prefer just one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, for me, it would be probably easy to pick one song is uh, Twist in My Sobriety. I was very surprised to hear this cover. <laughs> it uh, yeah. really uh, reminds me a lot of my childhood. And back then I really uh, listened to that song, like, you know, like a hymn of gloom, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
an uh, incredibly gloomy but uh, beautiful mm. gloomy song. And yeah. How did you come up with the idea of covering this song? Uh, it was Martin's proposition uh, that we uh, all uh, validated uh, right away because uh, for the same reason that they knew it, it, it's a, a song that's rocked our childhood. And uh, I always had this song in my mind uh, somewhere and uh, I was very happy when he announced uh, us that we were covering the song and uh, yeah so that, that's we can consider it's a kind of a tribute in our way to, uh, to a mm -hmm. song from our childhood. Mm -hmm. Yes and uh, in general if we speak about uh, that era so besides the nostalgic factor uh, and uh, in terms of music what is uh, special for you about the 70s and 80s era. So what was so special about music back then? Because, you know, I noticed that it's very popular nowadays. Uh, I mean, a yes. lot of artists really pay attention to this era and try to like put this into their music. So what's so special for you about it? The sound, the, the keyboards, the, I think it's uh, all about um, what, what it reminds to us of our childhood, I think it's hard for me to to, to say exactly. Uh, it's the atmosphere, the emotion of it. It's just to uh, bring you uh, through the years uh, before and uh, and the uh, memories of uh, childhood and, uh, and uh, teenager um, times. It's mm -hmm. a kind of uh, another word in English, but uh, um, you know, when you, you like to, uh, to experiment it again because it's a nice memory. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. And in general, uh, what is the recipe for perfect rock metal song, in your opinion? So, what are the major ingredients? Uh, good riffs, <laughs> uh, powerful rhythmic uh, section for sure, nice lyrics, uh, catchy melody. I think catchy melody is very important, in my opinion, something that's uh, stays uh, stuck in the head that you you can remind easily, and uh, and experimentation of course, oh, of course. <laughs> something <laughs> new. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, with that said, um, what are the recent releases by your colleagues that are impressed you the most? Uh, recently, all these ingredients. Yeah, recently I have uh, been blown away by the new album from Epica. Mm -hmm. uh, for different reasons, but uh, I, I love what, what they do, but uh, I, I really like this opus because of its diversity, mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's a lot of different songs, different uh, approaches, different collaborations too. And uh, as I said, I like to be surprised by a record and I, ha I have been surprised in a very good way on this one. Uh, with a uh, really surprising things like uh, like uh, a saxophone solo on the on the record. Oh, <laughs> what is it? That's very interesting. And uh, so yeah, that, that was probably the the record that uh, that blown me away uh, this uh, recently. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with you. I remember I was writing the review. Uh, for this album and uh, I really couldn't help being surprised as you say each and every song was extremely surprised yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so can you please tell me what are your goals for the future I mean, you as a person and uh, maybe band's goals if you can really uh, reveal any uh, in music uh, as much in music and in life I think my main goal is being happy with what I do, with mm -hmm. I, what experiments, uh, in life experiences and in, uh, in the music uh, work and uh, collaborations. Uh, I really want to be happy with what I do and, and be happy in life in general. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so happiness is the key. Yeah. So, uh, the very <laughs> last and uh, one of my favorite questions, what would be a message for the fans who will surely enjoy this video? Well, today is the day. It's the release day of the, the new album, so it's a, it's a important day for us. And uh, we we had a lot of pleasure uh, recording it and uh, creating it. So we hope 
that uh, our fans will uh, enjoy it, will be surprised in a good way, <laughs> not too much disturbed. And uh, and we'll, we really, really can't wait to be uh, back on stage and uh, perform the new songs uh, live. Mm -hmm. That's uh, very exciting.